Hey, I'll freeze cracked here. Hey, so here's the deal. It's turkey day, mid-afternoon, and I felt like I had the need to do a video to talk about turkey roasting um, or turkey tail turkey tail resource roasting or whatever no you don't you don't resource you don't you don't roast that stuff you just hit it you know what I'm talking about some of you do so anyway uh, the reason I wanted to point this out is because right now if you hurry you probably can go to your local department store or whatever and you can find one of those things for like 20 bucks 25 bucks and basically it usually has a pan or tray in it that you take out and if you want to you can put a bunch of sand in there as a thermal sink or anti-thermal shock benefit um, and I know I probably I talked about heating rock sometime in the past and I'm not an expert on heating rock but I wanted to give you some thoughts and a few resources um, there's lots of ways to do it some people you know build a put put flakes and things in the ground and cover them with some sand a layer of sand and build a fire on top of it and hope for the best and that will sometimes work people try a lot of different things some people have programmable kilns which is the absolute best situation because if you get that set up right you basically can configure it and turn it on and forget it and come back a few days later whenever it's through and it's done but for those that don't have that kind of a resource a turkey roaster might be something that would be a benefit and i say a benefit because it's very easy to ruin rock with that but on the other and there's and there's a, a bunch of rock that will not be cooked in that because it doesn't get hot enough but uh, like where i am in texas not where I am, because there's no rock here, but in Texas, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of church flint rock. And a large percentage of it is unworkable raw. And I'll talk about that some in a minute too, but um, a very small percentage of it is, is fine to work raw. And another large percentage of it will work okay if it's heated. And, and it's a complicated, it's almost like an art, but at any rate, it can be done, and to some extent, it can be done with that right there. So, I'm gonna move that, and then talk about some information. Okay, I'm always reluctant to mention stuff online because I don't control, you know, what gets changed online. But if you were to go to Google and Google heat treating flint, you're going to get a number of different hits come back on that. And at the current time, at the date of this video, you know, one, one resource that I think is pretty good is on the Puget Sound Nappers for, forum. It'll be that hit. And it's, it's done by a guy that I've never met, but I've looked at his work. Uh, he posts on flintnappers.com some of his material that he sells, his name's Jim. And uh, he apparently knows quite a bit, I think, about rock and different kinds of rock and ways to heat rock. Uh, and his background is just good for that and I, I just think he knows what he's doing and talking about on there and there's a quite a bit of detail in the information he posts on there and there's there's recipes there that he's got but then there's lots of 
other stuff that you can find whether people have recipes and a lot of it's learn by trial and error that you've got to do because no two rocks are the same and even an individual rock isn't the same throughout. Um, and heating a big rock is asking for trouble. It frequently just won't work. There's most, most materials where you have crypto crystal and silica that are, is, is super dense and, and low, low, low porosity you know it has it gets moisture in it when it's in the ground it gets saturated and basically it's a little bomb if you try and, and heat it fast um, but even if you try and heat it really 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 slow and keep it under the boiling temperature for a long period of time it's still very difficult for all that moisture in there on a big thick very tough dense rock to get out um, and basically what you're doing when you're heat treating rock, I think, is you're, you're doing tiny little incipient microfactors through the, through the material. And basically what that means is then when you hit the rock later, the, the flake tends to propagate, propagate through grains of material as opposed to trying to work its way around them or, or tear it or split it or whatever. Um, it just it just works easier. Now I don't prefer heated material because it's not as strong. But um, there's some material that you can't work raw, and there's sometimes you know it's a it's a it's a trade off. Uh, let's see. I realize I'm being very rambling, but okay. Here's two little preforms, or whatever you want to call them, two little bifaces that are absolutely, seriously tough material, the likes of which, you know, you almost can't finish in anything decent. And you'll notice how thick those bifaces are because it's just such tough material. And the other thing is some of the material that's super, super, super tough doesn't have very good edge qualities. It, it can be crumbly, not crumbly. Um, I don't know what you want to call it. In this case, when you have the lighter flints that have more impurities in it, not just pure crypto crystalline silica, and sometimes it's a little crunchy and it doesn't stand up to the amount of force necessary to drive a flake through something that's that tough. I mean, this stuff is absolute nightmare to try and nap it. And the only reason I've ever napped this sort of stuff is because for me personally, it was a fun puzzle challenge. See what you can get out of this freeze kind of situation. But it's still not a good thing to do, particularly if you're trying to end up with a good result as opposed to a good weird experience. But so that's another reason that you want to heat treat stuff because if you want to get something actually wide and thin then the best thing would be great raw material, but if you can't get great raw material, then a material that's heated just enough to relax it a little bit to make it workable, as opposed to really nuking it and getting all glossy and shiny and, and flake real easily, because you don't want to try and do that when you're trying to push flakes a long ways. It doesn't work, they break. But anyway, which, Brings me to another thing, and I'm just sort of rambling, but I'm trying to get information out there. I know some of it's probably already out there, but at any rate, you don't have to, when you're working these, a the good thing about it is you don't have to worry about dropping them. Um, <clears throat> one time, somebody handed me at a little napper gathering, a little private napper gathering, somebody handed me a big large rock and they wanted me to biface it for them and it was too tough and I, I I'm trying to remember this story I don't remember exactly how it went but at any rate at some point they took it away and they went and had it nuked and brought it back and wanted me to work it 
another time whatever anyway you gave it to me and I'm like you know this isn't workable it's 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 messed up now because when you have a big giant rock and you heat it too much then it doesn't have enough strength left to set up strong enough edges and drive big long flakes through thick material to get it bifaced well so to make a long story longer what you tend to want to do with those kind of things is biface it out the best you can initially and if you have to and it's too tough then heat it just enough to relax it a little bit and I'm not talking specific temperatures because it's going to be different for every rock and, and you want to look at all the recipes from the experts that have heated rock for years and years and years in quantity but um, you know we're talking maybe 350 or something to try out at first as opposed to running up high because you can always reheat stuff but at any rate get it just just relaxed enough to where you can biface it and knock it down to a thinner safer to heat um, thickness and and size and get it done as best you can and then heat it again to the optimal heat to finish the the blade and then and then work it at that so there, there's a lot of strategy there's a lot of you know expertise that comes into the heat treating stuff but it is a way to turn worthless rock into sometimes excellent amazing magical rock <clears throat> and it's a way to sometimes have a resource if you don't have a resource of great raw rock laying around anywhere near you. But the other thing, you gotta know your limits. Like for instance, this is Abo. Um, this is old. And <clears throat> to me, this, you know, is still more or less a nodule. And it was a pretty good shape and it was a pretty good size nodule for doing something with. But when whoever hit it started hitting it, it looks like they got a good flake off of here that they probably used for something. But in addition to that, and I would have said this was just a core doing, if it had a bunch of stuff like that on it, but it has some setup here for platforms, hammerstone platforms, um, but none of this other stuff looks like, I mean, it looks like he was actually trying to work it and it wasn't working. I mean, it looks like it was tough as heck and he's just getting short little chattery type things coming in. Everything's steep and it just looks like this was not his favorite rock he ever met, so he abandoned it and picked up a better one. And there are times when you got to do that. And in fact, some of these came out of one of my buckets that I have marked, you know, give away at a nap in to people that are probably going to intensely dislike me after that. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the point is on that. I think it's just a natural reluctance. A lot of us have that love rock to not throw it away. But this thing here isn't workable like it is. And I have a feeling it probably would work okay, maybe, if it were heated. It does look like it has a lot of weird concrete type stuff in there, but I think some of that will cook. Anyway, now, if I didn't say it before, you can't tell anything about how heated material is gonna work from looking at the surface of it, if there's no been no flakes taken since it was heated. So like, this actually looks like it could have been old, like an old spall knocked off. And it looks like it has a bunch of damage in here from where it was hit. But like right this surface right here was the surface before it was heated. And then these flakes were, that flake was taken after it was heated. These, these are all taken after it was heated. And what you can see is it's really glossy, it's really shiny, 
And to me, that's frequently indicative of a heat way more than I want on stuff that I'm gonna work. And I have no idea where I got this rod. Like most of my stuff, I don't have any idea. Um, I'm relatively certain I didn't heat it. I may have picked it up off a, a garbage uh, tarp at the end of a nap. Or I don't remember. That's the case with a lot of my stuff. Um, so I'm gonna stop and come right back.